We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Dear speakers, partners and honoured guests, it is my privilege and great pleasure to welcome you to this year's IGF Open Forum number 24 on the Gulf Stack Initiative and Global Digital Government Cooperation. My name is Nanjira Sambuli. I'm a, member, a board member at the Digital Impact Alliance and I'm a tech policy and governance analyst and I will be today's session moderator. We are honored and proud to host this event with such inspiring speakers who will share their perspectives on global digital government cooperation and the digitization of government services. It is our understanding that there's a strong need for digital government services and digital public infrastructure to leverage the full potential of the digital transformation and to reach the sustainable development goals. To achieve this goal, strong global cooperation and partnerships are crucial. Only through sharing knowledge and joint investments that are guided by human rights standards and based on the citizen needs can we foster a digital and green digital transformation that serves the people around the globe? The GovStock initiative that was founded by BMZ, that is the Germany's uh, Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Government of Estonia, the International Telecommunication Union, Smart Africa, and the Digital Impact Alliance, as well as the Digital Public Good Alliance, is an innovative example of digital cooperation to taking the next step to provide access to digital building blocks and digital public goods to a global community. Before I hand over to our speakers and our panelists who I will introduce in turn, I just want to say once more on behalf of the panel organizers, welcome. And it's wonderful to see so many of you uh, virtually because I cannot quite see, oh, well, there's one person in the room in Katowice. Uh, and so without much further ado, we will get started. Um, and I don't know, I'm just gonna check real quick if we have Ms. Metz with us. If not, I will warmly welcome Ms. Doreen Bogdan-Martin, who is director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau of the International Telecommunications Unit or ITU and Secretariat of ITUD. So Doreen, I'll pose the question to you. Global partnerships and cooperation are critical if we are to achieve the investments in infrastructure, applications and capacity necessary for digital public infrastructure to reach their potential. So in your view, what are the keys to successful global partnerships in the context of digital transformation? And how can different stakeholders align their needs into shared priorities to accelerate progress towards uh, DPIs or digital public infrastructure? The floor is your story. Thank you so much, uh, Najir. I guess you can hear me okay? Super. Very well. All right, so good morning. I think it's still morning to, for some. Good afternoon and, and good evening, everyone. Um, this morning in the, the opening ceremony, the Polish president stated that we all live in a digital world and that digital transformation is a must. He challenged us to be bold and GovStack is bold. It's innovative, and I think it can also be a major game changer in the way that we approach digital transformation. Uh, I'm pleased to have this opportunity to share our work um, on this partnership with the broader IGF community. GovStack um, and its collaboration is all about accelerating the design and the delivery of government digital services using what we call a whole of government approach that will ultimately benefit the whole of community. This is an approach that follows the principles that we set out in the ITU dial SDG investment, digital investment framework that was published back in, in 2019. 
So the GovStack concept emerged from observations that despite significant efforts and investment in digital technologies and applications to drive global development, the results just weren't materializing. Instead, progress was actually being hampered by a lack of coordination and particularly by fragmented siloed approaches, which effectively reinvented the wheel over and over again, something that many of us, of course, in the development community see far too often. So to make real and rapid progress, we really need a much more collaborative paradigm. Uh, and that's where this, this partnership piece comes in. Successful global partnerships are founded on a shared strategy, a, str a shared vision, and a common understanding of digital development priorities and of the barriers that we need to, uh, to overcome to make digital transformation a reality. Just last week, and I think you followed this, Najira, ITU released new figures that show that, that 2.9 billion people have never ever used the internet. And of course, helping these people get connected is gonna require very different strategies, very different models. And it's not gonna be business as usual that's gonna connect this last 3 billion. So to bridge that gaping divide, we need to work collaboratively through broad global partnerships to co-design digital development initiatives hand in hand with countries and of course with local communities. That local piece is a key, key component. The emphasis on collaboration cannot be overstated. No one can do this on their own. And that's why ITU took the initiative to launch our Partner to Connect Digital Coalition um, on the sidelines of this year's UN General Assembly. We also launched our, our first piece on connecting people everywhere yesterday at, at the IGF. And this new uh, global partnership platform is all about um, making commitments. It's about ambitious connectivity commitments to get the job done. Um, so the GovStack partnership, which is directly linked to that, I think is an excellent example of an innovative approach that we're trying to achieve through our partner to connect. Um, GovStack is a learning ecosystem for digital teams so that they can see how um, technical specifications were developed. That's a key integral piece of GovStack, how they're continuously updated and how they can be adapted to specific countries' needs. We're also creating a sandbox environment for digital teams where they can test specifications, building blocks. We have a mentoring piece that comes in with technical experts for each building block. And our priority is that we provide our member states with something that's concrete, something that's implementable, and of course, something that's sustainable to accelerate digital uh, service design and delivery. And just quickly on your last point in terms of stakeholders and how they can align their needs because that alignment is absolutely critical. I think the scale and the scope of digital transformation is gonna require, as I mentioned before, a strategic approach that can help us to maximize opportunities and of course to reduce uh, risks. Um, so we, we are looking at this in terms of economies of scale and of scope and for governments, effective digital service design and delivery means first and foremost, making digital transformation a national policy priority. We need that political commitment. We need that government-wide commitment and that will serve to be an overarching collaborative framework um, for partnership around digital service delivery and design. Uh, that means an integrated digital agenda. It means a designated authority that's responsible for coordinating and overseeing the implementation. And it also means having a multidisciplinary team to put all of these pieces into, into action. Um, we need to be simple and straightforward. We need, as I said, to focus on the needs of people so that we get that rapid uh, user uptake. Um, and of course, we need to be we need to be collaborative. So by joining resources and working within this collaborative framework, we can achieve impact at, at scale. Uh, with that, I do want to uh, take this opportunity to thank our GovStack partners, GIZ, of course, DMZ, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Estonia, Dial, uh, and all of our partners for their commitment and the hard work to make GovStack a platform for digital collaboration that can be used 
by any government across any sector. Thanks so much, Vera. Back to you. Thank you, Dorian, and thank you for highlighting some really interesting principles that hopefully we can visit in discussion around well, how do we cultivate political will over and above having the, the sort of guardrails, right, or the rules of the road, um, and how we organize our governments to work differently, um, given that uh, digitalization is uh, now suddenly, I guess during the pandemic, shown us that it's not just the thing that happens on the side or in ICT, but it's, it's, it's permeating across the board. Well, before we get to that, I want to introduce Laura Teresa Kruger, who's a senior policy officer in the Division of Governance, Rule of Law and Democracy at the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development in Germany. So Laura Teresa, the pandemic has exposed the potential role that digital technologies can play in tackling global challenges. It's also revealed a lot uh, of challenges for governments to act on this potential. So in your view, why, why is now such an important moment for digital government and what needs to change to fully leverage the potential of digital transformation? And also what is the role of GAFSTAC in establishing global digital cooperation and how can the initiative support digital transformation of government services? First of all, hello to everyone. Thank you, Nadira. Um, it is with great pleasure that we present today the GovStack initiative and the important work of the GovStack community of practice within the Digital Public Good Alliance at this year's IGF. The German government is delighted to be part of this digital global partnership and to support the important work, uh, the important effort to work towards a sustainable and green digital transformation of government services by de developing digital public goods. Um, global challenges, you've mentioned, Nigeria, the COVID-19 response uh, shows, make us collaborate even more on digitalization in order to build forward better. We've seen that the public sector's response to the pandemic has fueled exceptionally rapid change in administration. So still, uh, but still governments have struggled with the upsurge in the demand of digital services over the past month. I've seen, I think we've seen that worldwide. One of the lessons learned during the pandemic uh, to us is thus uh, that we need to further scale digital infrastructure. We stand at a moment of great opportunities, but as always in these moments of change, we also face risks that we need to mitigate. So to fully leverage the potential of a sustainable digital transformation, we need to make sure that we indeed leave no one behind. Digital infrastructure needs to be accessible for all and worldwide. Firstly, that means to us setting standards for human-centered digital services and digital public goods is vital. This is exactly what the GovStack initiative is doing and we as BNZ are proud to be a part of the initiative. Secondly, we need to truly work together and leverage the GovStack partnership to overcome silos. At times, investments are not coordinated and remain fragmented and therefore they are neither scalable nor sustainable. And this results in a loss in time and resources for our partner countries. That is why we need to provide access to digital public goods for the global community. One way is the development of a learning platform to show how digital public goods can be used and contribute to transparent and efficient government processes worldwide. This is where the GovStack collaboration with, among others, Estonia, ITU, Dial and Smart Africa and our approach known as digital building blocks will truly power digital transformation. It aims to give governments the chance to build and deploy their digital services, platforms and applications in, a, in an accelerated and integrated manner. Our vision is that in five years, all governments and particularly those in low resource settings can take ownership of their digital futures. Through the use of ICT building blocks, governments can provide more effective and cost-efficient digital government services. We are excited by the progress made within our initiative in the course of 2021 to reach this goal. The GovStack initiative has set up 11 technical working groups working on specifying ICT building blocks such as payment, payment or digital ID. And furthermore, a global community has been established and more than 60 experts have been onboarded from civil society the open source community, academia, and the private sector. Global digital cooperation is key to support a holistic approach to digital government service delivery and to ensure the implementation of digital public goods. That is why we are very proud that GovStack joined forces with the Digital Public Goods Alliance. 
Having established the GovStack community of practice jointly with the Digital, Pub Digital Public Goods Alliance, GovStack supports the al alignment of ecosystem stakeholders and the harmonization of activities around implementation of digital public goods. Another promising potential for the initiative is an evolving partnership with Smart Africa, but also partner countries such as Rwanda, Kenya, Egypt, and Ukraine. So uh, to summarize, we appreciate the existing partnerships and the great spirit that has been turning ideas into action. We welcome the cooperation between those who agree that digital transformation needs to evolve around people. And we look forward to jointly put forward digital public goods for all and everywhere. Thanks. Thank you so much, Laura Theresa, for laying out um, what GovStack is offering um, at this point. Um, I will now turn the floor to Ms. Nella Lusk, who is the Ambassador at Large for Digital Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Estonia. So Nella, as a, as a global leader in digitalization of human services, what made the Estonian approach so successful and what advice would you give to other countries and related to that is what role do you envision for Europe and how can a team Europe approach this such a thing and the European values, uh, which we hear a lot about in tech policy making, strengthen the global digital cooperation or digital governments as we, as we envision today. The floor. Uh, thank you uh, for your kind uh, introduction and, uh, and I'm, I'm really, um, uh, humble here to uh, to to hear that uh, Estonia's experience has caught uh, so much uh, attention, uh, not only around our our, our neighbours but also uh, worldwide. And, and we try our best to to um, to keep up with these digital technologies because it it is clearly becoming uh, more uh, more difficult. Not only because so many other countries are doing great things and have been also doing great things over the past. Uh, 20, 25 um, uh, years, but but also it's actually increasingly difficult for uh, for a small country, but not only small countries like Estonia, to keep up with these technological uh, developments. And uh, and I would actually like to start with um, uh, saying how how much actually Estonia needs GovStack uh, to continue its own digitalization, because a lot of innovations all over all over the world. Uh, on, uh, are not unique and, and they are not only put in practice in very unique circumstances, but, uh, but actually um, innovations that could carry from, from one country uh, to, to another. And, and Estonia has been open uh, for digital innovation to be sort of test bed to pilot different digital in innovations that may not necessarily be born in, in Estonia, but also in, in other countries. So we have our uh, government stack that we make uh, a public to the others, but we are also using other countries' experiences. So this is also actually a learning platform for us. But now to come back perhaps to the Estonia's, I would say, transformation story, because digital technologies have not only made us the, the most digital or one of the most digital countries, but they have actually transformed the way Estonia used to operate. It was not so long ago when, uh, when we were not known as, as modern, effective, open and, and, uh, and secure, but, uh, but uh, rather something, something different. But when we look now back to this development and why, why I am really glad and, and why Estonian government is, is supporting Kovstak initiative and is very happy to collaborate with with our founding partners from, from Germany, ITU and, and Dial, and hopefully also expand this network of, um, of first collaborators, is actually the core principles of GovStack. And these have really helped Estonia throughout this process. And one of them is actually sharing and reuse. And, and uh, it was a very early realization by Estonian government that actually the needs for digitalization across the government sectors, but also private sector, uh, are not so unique because all agencies need to collect data, maintain data, share data. All agencies need to sign documents digitally. They have to uh, sign, uh, let's say, administrative processes digitally. And, and this 
loss of the or has has been in digitalization and, and many of these uh, um, platforms are direct democracy platform data sharing the uh, solutions and, and so forth have been made uh, to, to everybody to use. But this was not only the, the way to save money, which was the main motivation, but actually this was also uh, the way to provide security across government and private sectors. Because it's also in Estonia the case well, well digitalized or have the same capacity, but it has been the government task to make sure that all the systems are secured the same way and they all comply with the same to uh, interoperability. Uh, all these systems have been open uh, in um, several issues that we uh, several problems in digitalization that we often try to avoid. Either all these issues that uh, that we are currently facing. So. Our government has made the decision that all the digital developments need to be open. And of course, uh, this has several um, reasons uh, and uh, that we have been supporting um, is going to be more widespread across our partner countries. Uh, but coming now to the second um, uh, part of the question that concerns uh, uh, Team uh, uh, Europe uh, uh, approach, of course, it has been uh, already mentioned here several times that nobody of us can can do these things uh, alone. The more aligned we are in this uh, uh, matter, the more we have an on the how to make synergies between very different initiatives. Because uh, I have been now in the government for, for a bit more than, than a year, and, and it has been quite a difficult task to map all these different cooperation mechanisms and, and networks that our governments and all the private actors are involved in. It may concern cybersecurity, digital for development, many other uh, mechanisms. And how to now streamline these um, uh, is, is a huge task. And, uh, and I see that, that, that Govstack and uh, the partnerships that Govstack has established with uh, Digital Public Goods Alliance uh, uh, perhaps in the future, some other uh, UN digital cooperation uh, mechanisms, but also with D4D hub in, uh, in Europe. Uh, these are all small steps uh, towards uh, more coherent and uh, digital developments that, uh, that we are all wishing for. So here I would, uh, would end my intervention and I'm looking forward very much to, to our discussion, but of course also to our work at GovStack. Thank you so much. And so many things we can possibly come back to, including the ways Estonia thinks they need GovStack. And you've pointed out a really cogent point around the multiplicity of initiatives. So you can imagine if governments are finding it difficult to keep up with initiatives, how it is for other stakeholders and how do we make sure we can streamline some of these and hopefully we can get to that conversation. Now, I want to welcome Ms. Lucy Harris, who is a co-founder of the Digital Public Goods Alliance. Lucy. How are the joint forces of the GovStack initiative and DPGA, which is the Digital Public Goods Alliance, especially in the GovStack community of practice, advancing digital cooperation and contributing to the DPG ecosystem? And maybe as, as part of your reflection, you can also let us know what are some of the added value uh, propositions that a community-based approach brings and how that helps accelerate the whole of government digital transformation approach that other speakers have spoken to. Lucy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's wonderful to be part of the GovStack work and of course to be here today. Uh, so as mentioned, I co-lead the Digital Public Goods Alliance, which is a multi-stakeholder initiative with the goal of accelerating attainment of the sustainable development goals through the advancement of digital public goods. 
Together with GIZ, we also co-convened the GovStack Community of Practice, which brings together experts from a variety of organizations to support and advance digital public goods with relevance to a whole of government digital transformation approach, also known as the GovStack. But before I get into the role of DPGs in the GovStack, uh, let me maybe take a moment to define digital public goods. So this original definition came from the UN Secretary General. In the Roadmap for Digital Cooperation, he said digital public goods are open source software, open content, open standards, open AI models that advance the sustainable development goals, adhere to applicable laws, follow best practices and standards, and do no harm. That's quite a mouthful. Uh, but at the core of digital public goods, there are three main components. The first is that they're digital, which means they're harnessing the power of the internet, to deliver solutions that anyone can access globally. The second is that they're open source, which means that they're licensed in such a way as to be a shared resource that anyone can see, use, and modify to meet their needs. And the third, lastly, they were designed to advance the sustainable development goals and do no harm, which means they were built thoughtfully to build common problems and mitigate common harms. So this concept of digital public goods is important because there is growing recognition that although technology itself doesn't solve societal problems, we can solve them using technology. And the way that technology is designed and developed matters. I was in another IGF panel yesterday as part of the Internet Commons Forum, where one of my co-panelists said, open source is not enough. And I think that's correct. When we talk about digital public goods, we're talking about more than open source. We're talking about digital solutions that advance the sustainable development goals that are open, not just in license, but in their documentation, in their commitment to interoperability, and that are designed and developed to avoid and mitigate harm. So then coming back to the GovStack community of practice, with this group of experts, we're working to build on the work of the GovStack initiative, which uh, Laura Teresa explained so well earlier and thinking about a set of technologies that can work together and interoperate as a set of building blocks to enable digital government services at a national level. And from a digital public goods perspective, huge benefits are unlocked when these underlying infrastructural solutions that have such incredible potential to power society are also digital public goods. Digital public goods can be freely modified to meet the needs of the implementer, giving people and governments control over the tools that are shaping their digital lives, and avoiding duplication and redundancy. Moreover, when someone's access to government services is enabled by digital public goods, they can more easily build on top of these platforms to meet their local needs, and then those local innovations can be shared and built on in turn, stimulating innovation and empowering people to problem solve and create for themselves. The aim of the GovStack community of practice is to explore this intersection between the GovStack and digital public goods through four objectives. Together, we work to understand and extend existing work that facilitates the discovery, development, use of, and investment in digital public goods for the GovStack. We also identify digital public goods that are likely to also serve as those building blocks, as well as digital public goods that are already functioning in that capacity. Lastly, we try to accelerate discovery of these solutions by exploring concepts like digital marketplace. We hope this a community approach to combine GovStack and digital public goods will help ensure that the next wave of digitization, which we're all working to bring about, creates opportunities for millions of people around the world to not just be consumers of technology, but to become builders, maintainers, and creators of their own digital environment. Thank you so much. Thank you. And again, so much we could possibly come back to. And I'm personally very interested in hearing some ideas around how this approach would enable people, and especially those who are yet to be connected. Uh, Doreen started us off with a huge statistic there, 2.9 billion. How we can not only connect them, but connect them in a manner that makes them what I call prosumers. They're consumers, but they're also producers or creators. That would be very interesting to come to. But before we get to that, let me also have uh, you see the floor to Dr. Thomas Silke, who's the head of division at a national and international standardization policy at the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy of Germany. I think in short is BMWI, <laughs> who's also joining us today. So Dr. Dr. Thomas, why are, first of all, what is the role of BMWI, as I'll shorten it, 
uh, in establishing global digital cooperation and how can the initiative support digital transformation of government services? And also in your view, why are global efforts and partnerships required to, access, to address challenges in the digital transformation of markets and governments? The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Najira, and uh, thank you to everyone. Good day. Um, yes, the ministry is not to be mixed up with the uh, car maker uh, names are very similar. We are responsible for um, the economic aspects of the internet and uh, as such, of course, are dealing a lot with the businesses and uh, of course with consumers as well. So um, I, I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir here when I highlight that digitization is changing our world immensely and we are experiencing a digital transformation of the whole societies that provides us with many opportunities and changes. The internet can, if used wisely, allow for decentralization, openness, fair competition, one of our topic, topics, and non-discrimination, among many other things. And at the same time, we are also more than ever reliant on digital solutions and to foster economic growth and prosperity, to combat climate change and to reach our sustainable development goals. We also look to digital transformation as an instrument and as a toolbox. And while many countries or even uh, ministries are still working in silos, digital transformation needs cross-border and cross-sectoral cooperation to provide the benefits it surely can. This is why I'm very happy to be here today and to exchange with you on this important initiative for the acceleration of digital transformation in, in government and um, economy. The ministry as I pointed out, is in this regard working closely with international partners, in particular with Argentina, Brazil, India, Japan, Mexico, and Singapore, in the framework of bilateral digital dialogues. These digital dialogues addresses a wide range of um, matters related to uh, internet governance, data economy, and digital innovation. Um, in short, the framework um, of a competition um, society and business environment. We also maintain dialogues on standardization topics with some of the countries mentioned before, plus with China, the uh, Eurasian Economic Union and the United States uh, in the framework of the US German Standards Panel. All these activities uh, are combined under the network headline quality infrastructure global. Um, these topics, among others, are how international standardization could contribute to smoother and inclusive technical progress, avoiding unnecessary frictions from different standard setting, certification schemes and accreditation systems on a national level. We have learned that this is important for industry 4.0, for IoT and for startups as well, and of course for consumers worldwide. And I'm again personally very glad that uh, this fruitful exchange has, for example, led to India being very much engaged in the GovStack initiative now too, um, Mr. Abhijak Singh, who is here today on behalf of the Indian government, will address us in the moment. Internet access and a reliable public digital infrastructure are the basis on which we can build digital services, I guess. We believe strongly that aligned international standards and frameworks are needed to create reliable connectivity and to help countries on their digital journey. The ITU plays a crucial part in this international effort. Through ITUD initiatives like GovStack, as well as through the standardization of regulation work that is being done in the ITUT and the ITUR sectors. So direct contributions to the digital transformation of the global society and economy are achieved every day. Germany fully supports all these initiatives. As some of you may know already, I myself have the honor to run for the post of ITUT director next year. My aim is to build bridges within the ITU and beyond and to focus on important initiatives. Some of them have been mentioned, but there is even more potential, for example, in shaping conditions for smart cities or by enhancing and standardization and standardizing remote and advanced internet-based medical solutions worldwide. GovStack is a perfect example for such a fruitful initiative. I appreciate the work and effort. The initiative jointly with other global partners, such as a digital, Impact Works Alliance and frontrunners such as Estonia, India, and Singapore in this context. So this cooperation provides not only good evidence for the effectiveness 
of digital innovation, but it is also a proof of meaningful collaboration with our partners worldwide. The concept of the ICT building blocks on which the GovStack initiative is based promotes secure, reusable and open standard software. This appears to be the right path to a free, open and interoperable internet. We ought to travel down this road accompanied by from those institutions that form the digital ecosystem for sustainable digitization. Germany will continue to strengthen the ITU development sector to drive the digital transformation and to promote sustainable economic growth. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much. And thank you for mentioning cross-border and cross-sectoral uh, approaches to standardization. I think of whatever current industrial age we're in, and if we can manage to go into the next age with unionized or uh, similar, you know, charging portals, for example, I travel and I have to have five of them or something. That would be a good start and would show that kind of cooperation that I think you're speaking to. We'll now shift gears and get some country perspectives um, into how GovStack as an initiative could offer value. And I will give a floor to Mr. Abhishek Singh, who was mentioned just earlier, who is the president and CEO of the National E-Governance Division in India, who's joining us today and will share his experiences or the experiences of India and perspectives on the digital transformation of government services. So Mr. Abhishek, what would you advise, first and foremost, other countries on digitization of government services? And what are the lessons that India has learned so far? And related, um, what are some of the challenges you see in, con in countries adjusting this experience to the respective local context? The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Nanjira. And uh, must compliment ITU and this entire team for taking up this initiative of GovStack, which will go a long way in achieving our common objectives, which are also aligned with the SDG goals. Like when we look at uh, governance and when we look at use of technology for improving governance or, in, or delivery of public services or ensuring that citizens get what is due to them, the first and foremost uh, thing that we have experienced in India is that keep the citizen at the focus of whatever we do. Okay, like whatever is designed, think of it from the point of view of the citizen and in every initiative, just structure it around the citizen rather than around technology. And when we do that, perspectives change. And very often, this whole whole of government approach comes actually from there. Where the citizen does not look at the government in silos. Government is divided into various departments, whether it's agriculture or education, healthcare, for the convenience of the way we implement our projects. But when it comes to a citizen, he looks at the government at one common whole. So when we have been like uh, implementing e-governance projects, initial experience was to implement department-wise, sector-wise uh, projects. But later on, we realized that there is a need to interlink these uh, initiatives and ensure that citizens are able to access all these services through a common interface. So that has been a, one of the things which leads to platformization of services. And what we do is that uh, to achieve this, of course, India has its own complex challenges because of our sheer size and complexity. We are like almost, as you all know, 1.3 billion people plus 22 languages. plus so, so whatever we do, we have to customize it for everyone and to, uh, and to ensure that everyone is covered. So for that, we started with building the basic building blocks. And one of the key initiatives that was taken up around 10 years back and which has been like remarkably successful and has been the, at the at the fulcrum of all of our tech initiatives has been the unique identification project, which we took up for providing a biometric, a unique identity to each and every citizen. And that ensured that everybody was able to access services and they did not need any document to prove who they are. And that led to financial inclusion. They were able to open bank accounts, which led to access to credit and uh, financial services. And then the other big initiative that was done was to enable digital payments because uh, digital payment was one of the focus areas and with a very simple innovation, which allows seamless transfer of funds from any financial institution to the another, the UPI, the unified payment interface was implemented and that connects all the banks seamlessly. And again, it's a very simple interoperable piece, which, uh, which brings together different players through common uh, standards and common uh, architecture. And digital payments has like being adopted uh, to an extent that last month we uh, crossed $100 billion of uh, digital transactions, which was like almost a 100% jump from what we had in November 2020. And that also served a, a 
that was a great relief to us during the pandemic because when the government wanted to transfer funds and because we knew which person has which bank account linked to which id it was very easy to transfer funds directly rather than the typical way of transferring funds to middlemen and through checks in which there is a lot of leakages and a lot of corruption and the lack of transparency and the other thing that we have been doing is that to improve the interface because very often citizens interact with different government systems just to get certain documents which then they submit to other 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 system like for example birth certificate people take from the uh, from the municipal authority or the health institution and then that birth certificate is primarily used for getting school education admissions so uh, data which is already there in the government is exchanged to another another system through the citizen and the citizen ends up being the courier or being the messenger of one document to the other ecosystem so to change that what we have done is that since we have the identity piece which connects various databases we have uh, brought in the document wallet which is we call the digi locker in which all documents of a citizen are accessible to not only him but with his consent to any other authority so for example if somebody has to apply for a passport he need not submit his date of birth uh, proof or his address proof he can authorize the digi locker to share that information with the passport system so it becomes a paperless kind of system so these three building blocks have ensured that we have been able to to build up a system of uh, cashless faceless paperless kind of governance system that has really transformed uh, the way we implement and when it comes to challenges what i will say is that the first and biggest challenge that we have is language enablement so like how do we ensure that various services are implemented in in multiple languages and uh, to ensure that people have access to that the second biggest challenge is uh, inclusion like digital inclusion we are a huge country we have like almost 700 million people on the internet connected for online services but again that leaves around 500 to 600 million people who are not connected so how do we provide services to them and very often their choice is limited to for not having a device not being able to afford a smartphone or not being able to or not having connectivity in the remote areas and the rural areas and third is that even if they have a connectivity and this they do not have the necessary skills to address that so that again becomes a challenge so for that we have been working for providing low cost devices or offering voice based services because very often people who don't have a smartphone they can also call a toll free number and access digital services in the voice mode so that initiative is kind of yielding results and the other is of course providing assisted access we have kiosks the common service centers as we call it we have a network of 400000 c kiosks which provide services to the citizens on the fly so people do not need to have anything they can just go there pay the service charge and get services so that's uh, that's one way in which it has been the digital inclusion has been handled and the over and above a lot of digital literacy programs in order to equip people in learning about that so any country who has to you know, which needs to adopt this i would say that they need to like uh, from our experience we need to share something i would just say that keep the citizen at the focus think of digital inclusion ensure that those who are on the other side of digital divide are also covered and design services from the point of view of the citizen rather than point of view of the government so these are the few things that i would like to share at this stage and maybe at the discussion we can have more points thank you so much and thank you for bringing such profound um i would say challenges slash opportunities because i think often when people hear citizen centered it sounds like this afterthought but what you've brought a multiple complexities that should be addressed at once language language voice assisted voice assisted um assisted access assisted access digital inclusion all of them have to happen in tandem as we also digitize services or make them open source and often in too many conversations we make it seem like it's a zero sum game so thank you so much for that um we'll hear another country perspective i'm personally very excited to hear about so i will welcome mr teli koroma who's the chief technology officer at the ministry of information and communication in sierra leone So Mr Koroma first of all most what is your vision on digitization of government services and what enabling components need to be in place for successful digital governance in Sierra Leone I would also add a question on what does what value does Sierra Leone see in GovStack and global digital partnerships for digital governance the floor is yours Mr Koroma Hi thank you very much um Nigeria um So yes, I'm Teddy Kuma um, from the uh, Ministry of 
Commission and Communication Government of Sierra Leone. So we're basically responsible for um, technology deployments in the country. And with regards to your question, I envision a scenario where the majority of the services provided by government is digitized and to help in order to help citizens access the services more efficiently. And when systems are efficient, you obviously get them, you know, you can get your service that you want in a more timely and of course more secure manner. Um, when digitization is done right and it is user centric, that is, it is designed for the, from the user's perspective, it democratizes access and lowers the barriers that underserved communities face when trying to access government services. And to get this right, a good way to start is to consider using a whole of government approach and make use of enterprise architectural concepts to ensure that the structural and operational elements are present to support the digital interventions that will actually impact and improve lives. So that is that is the vision that we have for this. And this approach for us serves as a blueprint to promote interoperability of government systems and ensure government systems that require interagency led business processes can do these kinds of things seamlessly. So the value that we see in GovStack is the golf stocks enable us to start small while thinking big, and then we can actually expand quickly with what works. So that's the value we, we see in, in golf stack. And by leveraging digital partnerships, we can actually build for sustainability. Because in this case, you have a, a team, you have a community that supports whatever solution you've, you've deployed, and then you can, there's always someone you can ask for help. So the digitization space changes really rapidly, and there are challenges for both current and emerging technologies, which obviously in our setting, it includes problems in coordination, securing financial resources, scaling solutions, and there are a lot of silos and a lot of duplication of efforts. So these lessons from our experience, we are now moving towards using um, um, an architecture, enterprise architectural model, which in this case we're using the TOGA, and the development methods, architectural development methods, and then in the section where uh, it covers the gaps and potential opportunities that we have identified. Leveraging the God stack, the God stack would actually help us um, streamline this process and actually just make the process so much easier. So that is how we we are looking at it. And basically, once these once we've selected the digital public good and we've had the public infrastructure um, set up and and the like, what would actually so there's optic and adaptation of these technologies is that they are customized for the local, local setting and context and also build the local skills and the developer communities within. So this will also create a sense of ownership because it's not just feeling like you're taking external software for us to use, but it also feels like we also help build it. So there's, there, there will be a sense of ownership and also and encourage homegrown solutions that can also, also be used as public goods elsewhere. So those are the kinds of things we're envisioning. So um, to also ensure that um, after you deploy this, it's sustainable, there's always this thing about consultation. So key for us is always consult, consult, consult. You have to consult and have continuous engagement with critical stakeholders to ensure that you keep this um, sense of ownership around and ensure that the programs are sustainable. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Farum. And thank you again to all our panelists for the introductory statements. I will throw out a question that is applicable to many of our panelists here, um, which is, I'll frame this way, how has or how can government administration structure or organization be shifted to drive this citizen-centered and whole of government service approach, either based on experience for those who are implementing or those who are researching or bringing the technical expertise together? Anybody who feels they're compelled to answer, I will invite you to, to share your reflections. Can I jump in, Najir? I just of want- Of course. Thank you. I just wanted to, I think it's a great, uh, great question. Um, you know, I think sort of the first step for governments, of course, if that political will and the government commitment is there to actually lay out a digital strategy, not a separate strategy for the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, but a single digital strategy. It really needs to be, as we've all said, that whole of government approach. So I think that that step is the first critical step. That's a really good Maybe. point. And yes, Abhishek, please jump. 
Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe I can can add something here. I think um, from a governmental perspective, oh, yes. you you ought to um, focus um, on the needs of uh, of the citizens and. Uh, that is one point. Uh, strictly uh, on what the needs are, and I, I very much appreciate what has been said before, that the government shall not think in silos because the citizen uh, expect to not to do this. And uh, the second thing is you need a coordinated effort. Uh, all too often, at least in our country, you have different responsibilities shared from different government agencies, and, uh, and there definitely needs to be a, a policy that combines all the different efforts uh, to a certain goal. I think that's very important. Thanks. Yeah, but I would just supplement the same point which was made by that, like the uh, focus on the citizen remains and the technology today allows us to engage with citizens and involve them with the in the process of governance. Like, for example, whenever we are framing a policy for doing something, to get the citizens' perspectives by sharing the draft policy with them, get their insights in what ways, who will be impacted, and then design the system so that we are able to address the needs of the, the most citizens. And that's actually what uh, democracy is about because uh, it's not that, uh, that people vote every time on what they want, but if suppose uh, if something like electronic health records, how does it, how, how, what benefits does it bring? What are the privacy issues involved? So in such a case, whenever such a, uh, such a uh, IT project or e-governance project is taken up, it's always best to spell out the strategy clearly, let the, make the citizens aware of it, get their inputs of all stakeholders, do the consultations, and then design the IT system. Because once the requirements are spelled out, then coding is and the tech part of it is easier. And this becomes all the more relevant, especially with the coming in force of AI and AI-based solutions, when in data becomes, the data plays a big role. So like with the abundance of data, what kind of data can be used? How do we anonymize it? How do we ensure that the larger public good is 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 uh, remains the focus point? So those uh, issues come in the ethical use of AI, the responsible use of AI, as we call it. So that becomes very very important as we go ahead with the IoTs and the 5G and more and more connected services coming in. Thank you, Abhishek, and I think you really raised an important point about how do we also involve communities at the standard setting level rather than setting standards and then trying to retrofit them to community needs. Nella, I see you're muted, so I'll hand over the floor to you as well. Thank you, thank you so much. And I would just like to perhaps remind that, that actually the whole of government approach or the proactive services, or let's say the life event-based services are actually not that uh, new to, to any of us. Um, as these ideas and names have been around for the, for the past 10 years at least, if, if not more. But still, we face issues and, and problems in the implementation. And, and from Estonian experience, what I could perhaps say what is crucial here is actually data. And it was partly mentioned, but it's because it's important to set um, clear principles for and also standards for data collection, maintenance, sharing, so that there would be this trust not only among uh, different public organizations, but also between public and private, because we would may need to share data, let's say, with banks in order for, let's say, the social benefits uh, be automatically delivered to people's accounts. Uh, and in order for this digital trust to be, uh, to be created, we have to really make sure that uh, our data is accurate, reliable, it is safe, and, and so forth. So I would say that, that that for Estonia, it has been uh, crucial, uh, the issues around data governance and, and stewardship. Thank you. Lucy, okay. let me come to you real quick and tie this back, this whole conversation back to the sustainable development goals, which uh, I think a lot of governments are more attuned to and familiar with. So in your view, how, does, how do we make the link more clear um, between DPGs or digital public goods and the sustainable development goals or sustainable digital infrastructure for, develop, uh, for developing countries especially? Well, I mean, the sustainable development goals span such a wide range of issues and they were chosen identified because of their kind of global ap applicability. And so I think looking through them, they're the same challenges that are being faced within countries as well. And increasingly, the sustainable development goals at that kind of global level are the most critical issues within countries as well. For example, climate change. 
So I think there's a very kind of natural and increasing applicability of looking at those now within the country context. And digital public goods, which are solutions that were designed kind of for good with that in mind, start often at that global level or trying to solve that common problem. And so are well suited often to be looked at within the context of a government's uh, digital public infrastructure. Does that answer your question? Thank you so much for that. Also open the floor to Telly and Laura. Yes, I mean, in many ways, because I think in my experience, um, for many governments, linking it to what's familiar is a very important starting point. Uh, so that, that really is an important way to, and I think over, over time, GovStack will have the work of showing how the DPGs or the proposition feeds into the sustainable development goals and the relation to digital. So Laura Teresa, I see that you're also unmuted. So please, well, you're welcome to join in as well. Yes, thanks. I'd like to just add a small point to what Lucy just said. Um, to me, the SDGs and the whole agenda 2030 is really about leaving no one behind. And that is what where I see the big, um, the big advantage that the GovStack approach has. So really, if we achieve global connectivity, and as you said, Nigeria, we still it's still quite a way to go. But if we get there, and if we if we can manage, as Abhishek has said, to have really human centered designed um, services, then I really see a, a great potential how the GovTech initiative can can contribute to achieving the SDGs and the principle of really leaving no one behind. Thank you so much for that. Telly, do you have any other additional uh, reflections on the many thoughts that have been shared? <laughs> uh, the classic mute button is still muted. Yeah, so al alignment with the sustainable development goals is always key for governments. And as mentioned before, it's a common goal for um, globally. And governments in usually prioritizing their, their service delivery to citizens usually always try to see where these, these service deliveries actually also align with the sustainable development goals. So while building applications, we're also now looking at the digital principles, which um, have certain core values, which guide digital implementations. But these things always have an eye towards certain de um, sustainable development goals and to ensure that these particular targets are met. So it's also designing software and interventions with the SDGs in mind. Thank you so much for that. And thank you to all our panelists. We've miraculously been able to bring in so many good points within the hour. And I will not even dare to summarize them um, so much to say that um, GovStack is also envisioned to be what is the famed multi-stakeholder approach. And as we've had from Abhishek, if you take a community-centered approach, that means you actually start with a community first and finish with a community rather than a bunch of us on a Zoom call deciding there's a new standard we want to bring and then sort of going to retrofit it. So I think that's one interesting change. It sounds very simple, but I imagine for a lot of governments, it might take a whole change in how they operate regardless of where they're situated in the globe. The link to the sustainable development goals also shows us the complexity of the cross-sectoral, uh, cross-border approach that was spoken about, which I think um, GovStack will be also trying to speak to. So to all, all, all those who've also joined us, please do check out GovStack the Global, where um, um, experiences, uh, your experiences as well, your thoughts can also be shared in the true multi-stakeholder approach. And with that, I want to thank all these wonderful panelists who've taken the time to share their wonderful experiences, for the partners who have joined us today, Estonia, Germany, ITU, the Digital Impact Alliance, and to all of you who work with us uh, to make GovStack a uh, sustainable develop digital development approach. With that, I thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Have yourselves a lovely rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.